Hello again, my name is Rex Wen. I'm an Iron Speed Designer MVP, and this is the second part of a video series I'm doing for using third party controls in Iron Speed Designer. If you missed part one, you might want to download it and view it prior to watching this one, as in part one, I demonstrate how to bring the necessary files and directories into an Iron Speed Designer application so that we can use a third party control in our Iron Speed applications. Uh, in part one, I mentioned that we are using a component art example for their grid control. And I go over the process of bringing the necessary supporting files in uh, to make the example work. I happen to have that project open in Visual Studio right now. And so what we're going to do is just jump right into Visual Studio and start using that code in Visual Studio to bring this control to life in Iron Speed Designer. Here we are in Visual Studio.net 2005 Professional Edition, and I've got the example project open from Iron Speed Designer, or excuse me, from Component Art. This is their bare bones grid example. And um, what the concept I'm trying to get across here is that we can leverage uh, Visual Studio, an environment that we're very comfortable in. Uh, coding, development, etc., to configure some of these controls before we bring them into Iron Speed. Uh, and in doing so, we can make use of the IntelliSense and the code completion that just makes our jobs a whole lot easier. So let's pick up what we need out of our Visual Studio application and bring it into Iron Speed to make this third party control work. To begin with, I just want to get this directive up here. Uh, and this is just declaring a namespace and a control that's going to tell Iron Speed Designer that we intend to use a component art control in this particular web page. Um, a frustration for a lot of developers new to Iron Speed is that they, they can't come in here and edit this ASPX page, and that's for good reasons. Iron Speed's locked that page up away from us so that when they do their code generation they have total control of what goes into this file. They have given us an inlet though to making those changes and we can do so in the HTML page and for all intents and purposes for what we are doing uh, we can treat this HTML page just the same way we would an ASPX page. So I'm going to insert a line at the top and I'm going to put my directive up there and I, let's just delete that space and I'm going to save this so now we've notified Iron Speed that we're going to use the component art controls and this web page. Let's go back and get the property code that's going to declare the control we intend to use, a component art grid, and spell out the properties of this grid control for us. So I'm just going to select this down to that compl closing component art grid statement and I'm gonna control C copy this and I'm just gonna bring this back into Iron Speed. And I want to paste this below the validation summary and above that closing form tag. I'm just gonna insert this right in. And let's make sure we don't have anything funky going on. And I'm gonna hit save. And at this point our HTML file has everything we need in it, but if we look at our ASPX page it's still missing our directive and it's missing our control declaration. If we build this application now at this point, Iron Speed is going to put that code in there for us. And as you can see it updated right behind us, here is our component art directive that we wanted and here is uh, our control declaration and the supporting properties. So you can see how Iron Speed uses this HTML page to ultimately accomplish what we want within the ASPX file. And that is all that we need to do in this part of the demonstration to make this control work. Let's go ahead and go to the code tab now and let's add in the code we need to make everything work together. So I'm just going to jump back into Visual Studio and I'm going to go to the code behind page. And in the page load event, I just want a structured call to build grid. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that in IronSpeed's related load data event. 
and I'm going to put this right below the call to load database and I'm not going to go into the discussion of what this call is doing. Suffice it to say, let's just leave it there and let's put our code in underneath it. Let's hit save and jump back into Visual Studio. Let's grab our supporting subroutine, copy it, and bring it back into Iron Speed. And we're just going to paste it in right here. Let me clean up the formatting a little bit. Now here we we need to make one additional change. We need to adjust the path to where our database is. So here is our DB directory and here's our demo DB which should add up to what we did here in the demonstrations folder. So let's expand that out. There's our DB directory. Here's our demo.mdb as we can see in our new cleaned up path. That's all we need to do. I'm going to hit save and again I'm going to build this. Our application is done building. Let's go ahead and run it. Now, when we run it, we're not going to see anything awfully exciting. The control is going to work, but it's going to be a pretty plain Jane demonstration uh, of this component art grid in Iron Speed. It certainly doesn't demonstrate any of the really cool features of the component art grid control. And if you're interested in the component art controls, Go to the Component Art website and check them out. I highly encourage you to do so. I use them in a lot of my applications and I've been pretty happy with them. So here we go. This is a Component Art Grid control inside of an Iron Speed Designer application. Uh, you'll see it generated the pagination for us. Basically, uh, um, that's all there is to using a third party control in Iron Speed. Um, so just to review, we leveraged our comfort and familiarity of Visual Studio.net to configure this control the way we wanted so it would do the things that we wanted to do using IntelliSense and code completion and we just copied this stuff right out of Visual Studio.net and we pasted the stuff that we would normally like to have in the ASPX section here into the HTML section and when we compile and build the application Iron Speed inserts this into the ASPX section for us. And that's about all there is to using a third party control in Iron Speed Designer. In part three of this series I'm just going to discuss using Visual Studio side by side with Iron Speed Designer. Um, and leveraging these two applications so that uh, as developers uh, we're staying in our comfort zone. We're, we're doing things the way we're used to doing them. We're seeing things the way we're used to seeing them. So I'll see you guys in part three.